Good. This is Nicole with Healthy Pet and talking about flea and tick. I feel like it's, oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, we tried doing this yesterday, but we had some issues with the audio, so we're gonna try again today. And uh, feel free to let us know if there's any questions that you have or anything that you want us to address further or even a topic for another video in the future. So fleas and ticks, what are they? They're parasites. They jump onto your dogs and cats and they bite and eat the blood. Uh, so fleas move around, which is one of the reasons that dogs will itch because there's that slight tickling action as the fleas crawl around and uh, move. And so that's one of the first things that people will notice is that their dogs are itching a lot. And usually we think that it's one of two things, either allergies or fleas. Uh, ticks don't do that as much. They bite down and they can stay on one host for their entire life. Um, or they may disengage and go into the shrubs or grass and hang out there until they find another host. So it's kind of the difference between the two as far as their movements go, but both are parasites. Uh, where they're found is in the grass and in the shrubs. Ticks do not fall from trees, uh, which is a common misconception. People are like, oh, forest preserved, they're gonna jump down on us. No, they're they're just hanging out there in the shrubs in the, in the, in the forest, so that's where your dog or yourself are, are getting them from, from all the long grass that we have here. Season-wise, fleas and ticks are active March to November, and that's if we have an actual winter. When we have a very mild winter, uh, you'll find that fleas and ticks can be active throughout, maybe not every single day like they are in the summer, but they can be um, definitely out and about more often during mild winters. So again, March to November, so we are definitely in the throes of flea and tick season despite the weather today yesterday was beautiful so they are um, looking for a new host for this season so a couple of different products that I like to use for preventing fleas and ticks uh, I recommend the Pets Life Herbal Defense Powder so the Herbal Defense Powder uses something called Quassia Amara Quassia Bark um, that might be a mispronounced but um, However it said, this product works really, really well. It does make it in a powder and they also make the spray. I have not used the spray on my dog because I found that the powder was totally sufficient to prevent fleas, ticks, and mosquitoes. But I have used the spray on myself to prevent mosquitoes and I found it very effective. Uh, the spray in here too is a concentrate. So the liquid's only about this far, you fill it up the rest of the way with water. We always recommend using distilled water, purified water, so that you don't have the chlorine and fluoride and other contaminants that are in our normal drinking water or in the normal tap water. Um, and then because they do that, it saves on shipping and so it's slightly environmentally friendly packaging. Um, so back to this powder, you do give it twice a day for five days. Uh, if your dog does not want to take it, two times a day or you only feed your dog or cat once a day, you can do it for one meal a day, but then you'd have to double the length. So you have to do it for 10 days as opposed to five. Uh, once it has taken effect, and it can take up to two weeks to take effect, so plan ahead, uh, it's good for about two months of protection. So mark on my calendar that, hey, I've got six weeks, and I start doing the, the next dose, so then I'm protected for another eight weeks. Again, March to November is the normal duration of flea and tick season here. Okay, uh, so a couple of other products that we have. Actually, we'll take a little tour to the store. Uh, is the Flea Flicker Tick Kicker from Arc Naturals. So there are other companies that we use as sprays. We also have a Vets Best spray. We have a Tropiclean spray. Uh, the Arc Naturals Flea Flicker Tick Kicker we do use this in our grooming department. Um, so with any of these types of sprays, personally I've used them, and I'll tell you the story in a moment. They say that they repel. I have not found them to be super effective for repelling. I found them super effective for killing, so anytime that I've found a flea or a tick, I can spray that on and the flea will die or the tick will start to back out because they bite down and clamp down. So they're a little bit different and I'll address that in a little bit. Uh, so this is definitely an effective product for killing, but repelling, not so much. So a couple seasons ago, my mom's house in Batavia never had fleas for like 10 years. And then one year, 
there were fleas. Took my dog out to go potty, came back in covered in fleas. I could not believe it. It was like over 20 fleas and pull them all off, spray her down with the product and the fleas are dead. Go back out for another potty break, come back in, more fleas. It just happened over and over and over again. It was just kind of ridiculous. Um, so I did try this product. I tried lots of other, other, other products and I tried this one and it worked and it worked immediately. So then when I took my dog over to my mom's house, check all the dogs, nobody has fleas. They all go out for go potties. My mom's dogs and my dog come back in. My dog, no fleas. My mom's dogs covered in fleas. So obviously my mom went ahead and used this on her dogs and no more flea problems. There still might be fleas out there. Don't know, seasonally, but they're not coming into the house and I attribute it solely to this product. Um, so as I said before, when we did have fleas and I was killing them with this, and we do use them in our grooming department, we do not recommend pulling fleas off and popping them. That's something that people will do is like kill them. They're like sense of accomplishment, <laughs> killing a flea. But that can actually lead to like cat scratch fever and a couple of other uh, nasty little things that you don't want to get. So just kill them. You can kill them, pull them off, put them in like a baggie or rubbing alcohol, whatever you want to do to dispose of them. But don't pop them. Okay, so as I said with fleas, sprays will kill them and you can just get rid of them. They move around, they jump around, they move from host to host. Ticks, on the other hand, when they bite in, their head actually implants into the, into the skin when, as they attach. So as you get them to back out, I like to use this. I don't recommend the YouTube thing of using fire <laughs> to scare the fleas out. That scares me. Dogs are kind of flammable. <laughs> towards the dog's hair. So use a spray to get them to back out. Um, or you don't actually have to have them back out. I think it makes it a little bit easier to remove them. But these are different t types of little tick removal keys that you can use to help remove the, the tick. You want to pull out the whole tick, uh, including its head. Leaving the head can lead to different types of infections. So I don't like to just pull them out with my hand. I like to use this so that I can get out as much as possible, um, as correctly as possible. So those are the things that I like to use directly on the animal myself. And there are a couple of other options. Uh, there's Vets Best, and we do have another one that's coming in that's safe for cats. So this one obviously only says for dogs. While these are great products and do definitely work and they are more natural, uh, they're also a little bit oilier. So just keep that in mind that the dog will have a slight oil, oiliness to their coat from using these products. But again, they're natural. They don't have crazy safety precautions that they're harmful to your pet, to you, or to the environment. Uh, so I like these if we want to go with a spot on treatment onto the coat. Uh, other options are your normal Advantix, Frontline, any of these over the um, once a month on the back of the, the neck on the coat kind of products. I don't personally recommend these. These aren't my favorite types of products because they have lots of different um, statements and precautionary statements where you're not supposed to touch the product. And if you touch these things, you have to wash your hands and possibly contact poison control, but we put them on our animals. They are effective. Uh, people use these all the time and plenty of people do not have issues, but I personally prefer not to use it and we do have other products that we do recommend. We do have this because again, not everybody has an issue, but it is a precaution. Um, okay, so fleas. If you have a flea problem in your house and you need to just cut it where it's at and figure out where the fleas are coming from. Like for myself, found out that the fleas were coming from my mom's yard because they would go out to go potty and they'd come back in with the fleas. But if you're not able to find where the source is coming from and you think maybe the dog is bringing them in or you haven't killed all the fleas, whatever the issue is, there is something called cap guard. This will, it's a pill that you give them and it will kill the fleas, adult fleas on your dog in 30 minutes or start killing them within 30 minutes. Again, only adult fleas, so it doesn't kill the eggs and it doesn't kill larvae that have been um, placed onto your dog. 
So this is a nice little thing to just get a clean start to figure out where you're going. Um, if you need to do that, another field trip. I forgot. Free shampoo. So when people use the cap guard, I do recommend that they use that, kill the adult fleas that are on their dog and their cat uh, to get that clean start. And then you need to treat your house and treat your dog. So treating the animals, uh, this is a flea and tick shampoo for dogs. We do have things for cats as well, um, but you do want to make sure that if it's for your cat that you read that it is cat safe. Lots of different things. Cats are much, much more sensitive to essential oils and to different types of uh, chemicals that are used in um, flea and tick products. So while this one is not uh, using chemicals, it does use essential oils and some of those essential oils are sensitive for cats. Uh, but this is a very nice product for the fleas and ticks and if you see on here kills fleas and ticks larvae and eggs so where you would use the cat guard optionally to kill those adults and just get that part taken care of this will kill that full life cycle for you uh, when you have fleas the flea bites that's the part that makes your dog or cat super itchy. Some animals also have allergies to those flea bites, and that's where this product comes in. This is Flea Bite Relief. Again, not everybody is going to need this particular product, but this is after you kill the fleas and ticks. This soothes the skin, so helps relieve any sort of allergic reaction that your animal is having, or just like a mosquito bite, how it just keeps itching. Not necessarily allergic to that mosquito bite, but it's a pain. So this will help give that relief for all of your animals, dogs and cats. Um, so again, redness, irritated skin. Okay, so that takes care of, you've got fleas or you've got ticks, you wanna take care of it on the animal, and now you know what you can use after the fact to help prevent it in the future from that particular outbreak. In your house, you have a couple of different options. There are flea bombs. I don't like flea bombs, again, for the same reason that if you would read the precautions, you have to evacuate your house and leave it well ventilated after shooting it off. I don't want to use that myself. We do have it, again, as an available option. If you do go that route, we do recommend that after you've used the flea bomb that you wipe everything down because there's that just that residue and you don't want your family touching it and minimizing your dog touching it as well. Uh, whether you do a flea bomb or you do one of these home sprays or the, the carpet powder, you do want to go anywhere that um, underneath things. So like underneath couches, underneath chairs, uh, moving the furniture around to get around to get to everything. Uh, fleas also like to hang out near baseboards and in corners. So do definitely recommend spraying all along the baseboards around a room in the corners definitely going heavier with the carpet powder in those areas and doing the sprinkling everywhere else but again they just seem to be attracted towards walls we have a question from ricardo sure. uh asking about hot spots from teas and flicks is that something that shampoo would help yeah with? so if your dog has the as a hot spot hot spot caused by the the allergic reaction from a flea bite this is the product that i would recommend and my dog, uh, Gabby, she was actually allergic to flea bites, so it was a very big issue anytime that she had flea bites or, or got a flea, so that's when I started using this product to just, it worked 100% of the time to not get the fleas, and then, but this is the, the product I would use to relieve any sort of the itching and remove as much of the bite chemical from the, the fleas to get that relief. Okay, uh, so treating the house with these two sprays. We also carry this kind of product from Vets Best, but I'm showing the Tropic Clean because we also have the matching carpet powder. Um, and then if you have a spray that you're using for this and you want something that's a little bit more general, this product can be used directly on your dog, but it can also be used on the bedding. Uh, so it's 
the same kind of product as this. Um, this one's a better value, but it's not directly for your animal. So this one, again, more expensive than this, but allows you to spray the, the bedding, the dog. So if you're just kind of refreshing things, uh, maybe you have a dog that you don't want to bathe or is a little bit older, you just need to, to check. You had somebody's other pets come over for a little doggy play date. You just want to kind of clean the area. This is a nice product to have on hand. Okay, getting into the last few things, flea collars. Flea collars are definitely not my favorite. I do not like flea collars. Uh, there's also some other <coughs> name brand ones that are very expensive. Uh, the Serestos, they say that they work for eight months. Um, in past experience, some of the less expensive flea and tick collars, we found your the flea and tick have to kind of crawl next to the collar to be effective. So you could imagine we're on a Great Dane where there's a very big space between the the tail and the head that the flea and tick may not get that close to the flea collar. Flea collars seem to be more effective now than they used to be, especially the, the Soresto. But again, as soon as you flip over and you start seeing those precautions, I tend to stay away from those items. We have them and we want to have everything that people feel comfortable with using and not everybody will have an issue, but we like to have options. So that's my little warning with flea and tick collars. And that is all of the flea and tick products. Um, I'll do one more little quick tip <coughs> if you have to do a flea bath or a flea hmm. dip. I like to move the water and the shampoo from tail and snout towards the center. Fleas and ticks, they will crawl into any area that they can for protection. So we have seen fleas crawl into the nose or crawl into the mouth. Not crazy super common, but when you're gonna do a flea bath, you wanna get all of them as much as you can. So starting with the water, moving it towards the center so that the fleas move towards the center, and then you can blast them with the shampoo. Uh, is one of my little quick tips that I like to use. Let's see, so yeah, I think that about covers it. Again, if you have any other questions, definitely leave them in the comments or come in and we can help you out. And if you have any suggestions for other things that you'd like to learn about, please let us know. And otherwise, your dog loves you, we love your dog, and we hope to see you both in at Healthy Pets.